and welcome to Chair Interval Training brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center and me, Lynn Hardman, Silver Sneakers and Flex Instructor. Hey, 4th of July is coming up and man, it is hotter than July on this June day when I am recording this class. I hope you and your family and loved ones can get together and have a ball or a blast. I hear that the odd fellows are going to put on the fireworks show so let's hope we don't have thunderstorms and rain us out we missed that last year and so looking forward to it this year hopefully you're staying safe staying hydrated why don't you join me for a little exercise we're gonna do this safely and to begin with that means checking with your physician whenever you start any new exercise program or if you feel dizzy or out of balance uh, please it's recommended that you remain or return to your sturdy chair we are actually not going to use our ball today but it just looks so appropriate for the occasion um, so won't you join me today we are going to need water we could tuck that underneath our chair and we're going to use some weights. I've got a five pound and a 10 pound, but if you got those sock weights that we made a while back or an, a jug with fluid in it, you could screw that lid on tight and that's everything you'll need as well as a tubing, a rubber tubing if you've got it. So let's get started. Remember, check your area. It should be well lit, nothing under your feet to slip, trip, or fall on and just go at your own pace. Do wear sturdy, appropriate shoes because if you're diabetic or even if you've not, you're not, a foot injury can really mess up a few weeks. All right, so that being said, let's put on some music and exercise. We'll get started slow because that's the safe way to do it using our best posture whether we're seated or standing and always within reach of your sturdy chair so when we work on the abc's agility that's the ability to move our feet fast or balance of course that's our ability to stand without falling maybe on one leg for a bit maybe on the other leg for a bit we've got our chair there to grab onto if we need it and when we work on C for coordination, sometimes our top half or our right half or our left half doesn't always coordinate properly with the bottom half. So you've got your chair if you need it. And we work on these things each time we meet because it's evidence-based exercise to reduce your risk of falls and increase your overall ability to enjoy the activities of daily life. I like it. <laughs> Hopefully you like it too. Now stay within reach of your chair, but I'm gonna come out front just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better with my feet. You can take a little march wide, stack your ears over your shoulders, over your hips, and then just rock side to side. Breathe, ideally through your nose. If you're like me, you've had a little seasonal allergies. It's hard sometimes to breathe through my nose. Just keep breathing at your own pace. Maybe rolling our shoulders back. By the way, if you do not like the rhythm that I'm going at, you can go slower. Okay? And if you do not like the movement I'm doing, you can do your own. So just keep moving. That's the best way to get started at your own pace, using movements that feel good to you. See if it feels good to you today to rotate a little bit through your torso. Pay attention to lift that rear heel so that you don't twist your knee or your lower back. And always, while you breathe and exercise, is a good idea to brace a little with your abdominals to support your spine. And 
If it feels good, you can reach a little over your head. If it feels fine, a little further. Good. And then bringing it back down. Marching those feet again, bringing them together. I want to preview a couple patterns we'll use. Today, let's do an all-American race. Let's do a triathlon. Eek! Don't worry. We're not going to compete with anybody. We're just going to use all three of the triathlon activities to get our heart rate elevated and work on our agility, balance, and coordination. Let's start with the swim, shall we? I'm going to come over to the right side of my chair and just do a basic crawl. One arm, and then the next. Or a little faster. And we could do that with marching feet, or we could do it with a step touch. Or even a pony with a little bit of a one, two, three, or a little bit of a moderate impact which will add to our bone density and our heart rate. So that's our crawl. We can do it four times, three times, two times, and then we can do a little side stroke behind our chair, four times, three times, two, then the other side. And let's end up over here on the left side. And let's try a little back stroke. So we're gonna go swimming with our triathlon patterns today. Ah, but we might want to work on balance and pretend we're on a bicycle. If you're on the left-hand side of your chair, you can use your right hand. And I want you to try to balance on your right leg and just pedal with your left leg as if you're pedaling on a bicycle. And you can do that with your left arm as well. Now obviously we can't pedal with both legs, but let's try it on the right. So that'll be a nice balance exercise for us. Side up to your chair, balance on your left leg, and pedal with your right. Right arm can follow. You could also do this with opposite arms, and we'll work on that later. I also wanted to introduce the run part of the triathlon to you. Walking is simply a slow version of running. So just walking in place is great. You can go faster when you're running in place. Or if you just took itty bitty tiny steps, you could run a little forward and back. You could run a little side and back. Always be able to touch that chair. So little steps. And we can do it on this side. Forward and back. And this side. We can do it at our own pace. But just keep moving. And you'll see, in that regard, we'll be able to get our heart rate up, work on our agility, we might want to go even faster or a little slower. It's up to you. But now we're going to continue to warm up and transition to our chair for a dynamic stretch. So go ahead and get your feet touching your chair. This will ensure that if you lose your balance, whoop, there you are, right in your seat. We'll practice standing up and sitting down a lot later on, but for now, while you're seated, scooch to the edge of your chair. Re-adjust your posture so that your ears are over your shoulders and your hips. Standing, or I'm sorry, sitting tall. Let's just stretch out our left leg, our right leg and our left. I'm all mixed up today. Okay. Good. Sitting tall, bracing with your abdominals and breathing. See how it feels to stretch that sole of the foot out into the air? Can you feel your abdominals bracing? If your hands are on your waist, you probably can. Let's try our opposite hand pushing with that leg. 
Then you hurt your lower back to have that foot in the air. You can put your foot down. We're going nice and slow, so let's try a little ankle wrist movement with a flex point flex. Good. Ankles and wrists need a nice warm up. We need them for so many activities of daily living. Let's see if we could put that left leg on the ground. Sit tall, breathe in, support on the lap, and hinge forward and reach forward. Now draw big circles with your wrist and your foot, one way and then the other. Excellent. Now lift your, your toes and gently draw your chin and your nose forward. Good. Inhale. Sit tall. Pull the navel in. Woo. Knee to chest. Or even over to one side. Do a little bit of an outer hip stretch. And then ease to your sitting upright position and lengthen out your right leg. Support on your left lap. Inhale up. Hinge forward. Ah. Inhale and fingers and toes up. And then down. Excellent. And then circles. Big ankle, foot circles, and wrist. One way and then the other. Great. Sit tall. Pull the navel in. Draw the knee toward your chest. Stretching the back of the hip if it feels good to you or even taking it slightly across your body. Stretching the outside of that right hip. Sitting tall. Open up your legs, toes and knees, same direction, please, for knee help. And put gentle inner thigh or hip adductor stretch on. Maybe it feels good to stretch your shoulder from your back pocket to your front pocket, and then the other. Whew. Okay, let's take a deep breath, and I want to remind you, when we're seated, that is the best time to get a sip of water. Exhale, interlace those fingers. Whoosh. So, the best way to protect your lower back and get things down low is to step to the side. Brace with the abdominals and the arm and lean to the side to get a sip of water, ideally when you're in your chair. Okay. <clears throat> Another thing I want to remind you is our perceived exertion. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to use one being the lowest intensity and ten being the highest. And that's what we're going to do while we exercise. We're going to continually monitor our own intensity and ideally shoot for a four to about a seven or an eight. Eight means I cannot continue at this pace. I must slow down. Now you know how you feel, so I'm trusting you at home, wherever you are, to move safely. Pretty soon I can join you in person at the senior center. It's a hybrid class. So call me, I'm in the red book, or email me if you're interested. We've got about 10 spots left. Please. All right, on your feet, let's move. We're gonna start with our swimming of our triathlon. Remember, it's not a race. Do the best you can. Go at your own pace. Step, tap right and left, near enough to your chair that you can touch it. We're going to be swimming for, I don't know, eight to ten minutes or as long as we feel like it. Do your best and when you need to rest, you can come to your chair and keep swimming. Now if you want, you can step with a little bit of a, a little bit of a dip in your skip. 
and a pony. And let's start with our forward stroke or our front crawl. Just a basic swim stroke. Best posture. You can make it really big. Or you can make it littler. It's up to you. Good. Let's do four more. Two more. Excellent. Now let's try our side stroke. Four each way. Right. And left. Don't get too far away from your chair so that you can use it for your balance check that you need. Let's end up over here on the left and get our feet going left and right with our step tap. Able to see and touch the chair. We're going to do our step tap, or if you like a pony with a moderate bounce in your step, you never have to jump. And then we're going to do our little backstroke. You can make it little, like a shoulder roll, or bigger, depending on your comfort. Just use your full, safe, comfortable range of motion. Let's do four more. Three, two, and let's side stroke over to the other side. And front crawl, oh. And side stroke to the other side. And back stroke. Are you with me? Side stroke right. Forward crawl or front crawl. Side stroke left. And back stroke. To your right. Crawl. Forward. To your left. Back stroke. Excellent. Do you have that pattern? Front. Good cardio. 
Our feet aren't really moving super fast, are they? Well, after we get back behind our chair, let's take a little break. Take a little breather, assess our intensity level. And decide if we would like to do this pattern a little bit faster. So think doggy paddle when we go to the side instead of side stroke. And doggy paddle when we go forward. And treading water when we go back. Does that sound good? If so, join me for a little swim. So let's doggy paddle forward. Three, four, so tread water. Three, four, side with our doggy paddle. And forward, our hands are going fast. And back, treading water. Now let's move our feet back. Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. And back, two, three, four, and side, four. Three, two, little, little fast steps. Forward, good, and back. Skull, or tread that water. And side, are your feet moving fast? Forward, are your hands moving fast? Back, push that water to the side. One more forward and back. Push the water. Water is a great place for you to get exercise, but land-based activities, as you catch your breath, give you better balance. And a mixture of both would be excellent. I heard that there may be people up there at the golf park pool providing some water exercise. Check it out. I think it's happening. All right, before we get seated for our strength interval, let's get a stretch on our calf muscles. Working one leg back, heel pasted to the ground. Lean forward. Just take a few seconds to help the calf muscles lengthen. Achilles tendon too, because we just contracted those muscles and tendons a lot. And these calf stretches on the other side now, please. Work it back little by little. Calf stretches are hard to do in the chair properly, so. All right, we are going to work on strength. So let us come back to the front of our, back to the front. Come to the front of your chair, line your heels up, lower legs actually physically feeling that chair. Because as we do a few mini or medium or full squats, we want to have the safety of that chair. And it's also a measurement to see how close we are. Some of us may be able to tap our bottom on the seat and then come back up by squeezing our glutes forward. Some of us can just reach those hips back and get a great hip and thigh strengthener that way. But eventually we want to have control all the way down the seat. We want to avoid plopping. Whew, it's hot today. So please, this is a great time to stay hydrated, taking a step to the side, leaning to the side, embracing with your abdominals and your arms. use our band or our rubber tubing first and if you don't have this you can go through these motions with me and you'll still get the benefit of some uh, intense contraction if you imagine a resistance you will still get some benefit and you're gonna get some coordination challenge too but these will be ultimately more effective for strengthening your body if you have resistance. And this is going to be our two for this one. We're going to work on a one-armed row. If you grab both handles with your right hand or one end of your 
tube if you don't have candles. And just push and point that right arm out to the side. Make sure the right shoulder is not hunched up. It's much safer if that shoulder joint is settled down. Sit tall, grab that tube, and see how it feels sitting kind of towards the front edge of your chair here to pull back a bow, almost like an archer. So our right arm is working hard to be still, and our left shoulder and bicep is working hard to hold. So now, if you feel like that's too much, you can grab further away on that tubing. If it's, if it's not enough, you're gonna cl grab closer to your right hand. Now, take a break with your arms. We're gonna do an abdominal exercise. We're going to look over our left shoulder and lean back. And then we're going to look out to the right where our right arm was pointing. So lean back, perhaps tapping your left shoulder to the chair. Pull your navel in and we're doing an abdominal slide for our rectus abdominis, the front of our core muscles. And we're also doing a little bit of a rotation using our obliques. So now, if you wanted to put these two exercises together, point your right arm out to the right and roll that left arm back as you tap the left shoulder. Easy does it. I've got a particularly thick, tough tubing today. So it may not look like I'm going through a big range of motion, but I'm working hard and I hope you are working as hard as you safely comfortably can. So let's try four more. You could be doing the core ab slide rotation movement by itself, or you could be doing the bow and arrow movement by itself, or you could be combining them. Well, you guessed it. Send those two handles over to your left hand, and let's reset our posture in our tallest position, and Extend that left arm, shoulders down, and see how it feels to row on this side. Again, you could take less resistance by holding further away from your left hand, or more by holding closer to your hand. Ooh, I don't want that much. Let's do a couple more of these one-arm rows. The left arm is working the tricep and the shoulder stabilizers, and the right arm is working the rear deltoids, upper back, and bicep. Now, give the arms a rest, engage the abdominals, and we're gonna lean back and look over that right shoulder, and then look over to the left hand where it was pointing. Pull the navel in, if you want more resistance, you're going to come closer to the front edge of your seat and lean further back. We're working on some spinal rotation as well as flexion and, and muscle strengthening. So when you move your head and you rotate with control, this is a big all body movement. Now if you want, we can add the the bow and arrow, one arm row. Shoulder down, left arm extended. Let's lean back and look back over that left, right shoulder. I have my left and right mixed up today. Do your best and breathe. Ideally, when it feels natural to you, Keep those wrists straight if you can, as best you can. There's a lot of grip strength going on here too. All right, I'm starting to feel it. When you feel like you're quivery and you're almost out of gas, you're done. Whew, that was hard. I felt that in my shoulders. All right, let's work on some uh, different muscles here. 
stepping on the tubing. Let's work on our hips. You can crisscross the tube handles and place them on the insides of your knees or the fronts or the outside, but don't let your knees knock together. Sit tall and let's see how it feels to step out to the right. Ooh, this is a tough thing. Let's step out to the left. And to the right, and to the left. So this is strengthening hip abductor muscles. We'll try a few more, and then, if you like, we'll do some bicep curls. And then, if you like, we'll combine the two. All right, sitting tall, bring those handles together in between your legs, draw the elbows to your abdominals or your rib cage, palms up and try a bicep curl. You can do them together bilaterally. Keep the elbows and the upper arms pasted on the body. Breathe. Or you could do them right and then left alternately to coordinate that. Then you could take a rest and see how it feels to do that hip abduction, right and left, and then add the bilateral bicep curl, breathing, or you could do your alternating, try to keep your body straight and tall. This is a coordination challenge for me. I hope it is for you too. How about four more, three more, two more. Woo, it's hot in here. For me anyway. Whew. You can take, take those handles, crisscross, a little space between your legs. We're gonna do some ankle eversion. So, lift your toes up. Heels stay pasted to the ground and push those feet out. If you don't feel anything because your ankles are typically pretty strong, you can lift or widen the space between your feet. How about tap or not? If the tubing is rolling around, it feels like it's going to come off your feet, resituate. It's okay. So those are ankle strengtheners because if you've never had a sprained ankle or an ankle roll, oops, trust me, it's very painful. And it'll put you out of commission for a while. So we're just strengthening them as well as moving them through a, a good range of motion. Now keep your feet still. We'll do our last set of rows. Hands close to the body. And if you like, you can combine your upright rows with your ankle work. I feel like I'm doing a funky chicken. <laughs> Go at your own pace. Breathe. Maybe four more. Ooh. It was pretty warm before I started, but it's hotter now. Release the tension on that elastic tube before you step off, please. And go ahead and hang that back up. We're not going to use it again, so you could put it aside, but please take your time, be mindful, and get another sip of water. Step it to the side, lean you to the side. Ooh. Water helps us to regulate our temperature. And when the temperature outside is really hot and it's humid, we need more water to do that. That's why we sweat, it helps cool our body. Some of us don't sweat. And um, so we have to be very mindful. Heat stroke is a real dangerous thing. So don't wait too late. Take frequent breaks if you're working outside or just plan it early in the day or late or hire somebody. <laughs> okay, we're going to work on the running part of our triathlon now. We swam, but don't worry, we won't leave out the biking. 
So you can run in your chair and move your arms and get your heart rate elevated that way. It's all about fast feet, okay? We're gonna be moving forward and backward today, so I need you to pay special close attention to lifting your feet up and taking very small steps and staying in your low athletic stance. And always, always within reach of your chair. So, we're all, and if you don't feel comfortable moving backward or moving off your spot, you can do all that footwork at your own pace in place, in your chair, fine. Or if you feel confident, see, in here. So, dig your feet, feet in, all 10 toes, reach your hips back and stand up. If you feel dizzy, sit right back down. If you want to continue moving, on your feet is where you're going to be. Let's start over here on the right side. Make sure your weights and your tubing and your water, all of your personal items are tucked away under the footprint of the chair or out of harm's way. And just start by walking. Best posture, even if you're seated, best posture. By the way, if you're in a chair for this running part of the triathlon, you might feel a lot of soreness, heaviness in the hip flexors or thighs. So be creative and pull your heels back a bit occasionally and take a break or stretch your heels out. Just keep moving to the best of your abilities. Okay, so we're at the right back corner of our chair. So we can move a little bit forward, just like we did with our swimming pattern. Four, three, two, one, and then a little bit back. And then we can move to the side. Four, three, two, one, and then forward again, just like we did with the swimming pattern. And then back. Let's just walk it out a little bit. And you can turn your body as you go to the right. And then back. And you can turn your body as you go to the left. And then, so we're doing like a little quarter turn. And back. Okay, we can continue doing this at a marching pace. Or if you like, we can take it at double time. A little low in that jaw. We're still using that four count forward, or you can count it out in eights. Right, one, two, three, four. Make sure you don't go past your chair. Back, stay low, fast feet. Left, four, three, two, forward, three, two, backward. Always within reach of your chair. Right, four, three, two. If you want, take a break and just march. Take a, take a nice deep breath. Now, you could have been marching that whole time. That's fine. Take another deep breath. How are you feeling on our one to 10 in, uh, perceived exertion scale? Oh, I can't hear you. All right, now, if you like, we're gonna go all the way around our chair, but I want you to, wherever you're at, if you don't feel safe going around the front of your chair, that's fine. We're gonna go all the way around forward, and then we're not gonna go back. Then we're gonna go around forward counterclockwise. So, over here, well, let's start on the left side so we can go clockwise for you, I think. So, Let's just march it out. We'll go forward, two, three, four, to your right, two, three, to your right again. So we're going all the way around the chair clockwise. Now, we can do it the other way. I think this is counterclockwise for you. And then forward. Clearing that front of the chair, knowing where it is, using best posture, and coming back to where we started. Now, if you feel comfortable, we could do that 
double time in our athletic stance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So forward, one, two, three, to your right, two, three, quarter to your right, two, three, and back to where we started. Okay, now counterclockwise, two, three, four, forward on the right side of your chair, to the left, four, three, two, quarter to your left, four, three, two, back to where we started, and march. How are you feeling? All right. Now, we're gonna pretend that we're near the end of this race, and we have to sprint, but we're gonna see ourselves sprinting in slow motion, okay? So, we're going to lift our left knee and balance, slow motion. Lift our right knee and balance, good. Now, if you can, try that opposite arm. Good. Now a little faster. Excellent. Now a little faster. If you like. And if you like a little faster. Lifting those knees a little bit faster. And if you've even got a top gear, woo, put it in overdrive. And you broke the tape. You made it. Whew, it's getting hot. How are you doing now with your breath? Can you talk? You must be able to talk while you're doing this work. All right. Let's do our forward and back and side and forward and back pattern one more time. So remember, at the back corner of your chair, so you have room to go forward and then side and then forward and back. Let's do it marching with the right, left, right, left, forward. Right, left, right, left, back. Turning to the left, right, left, right, left, and forward. Always within reach of our chair. And back. And right. And forward, always within reach of our chair. Are you ready to run? Let's run to the left. Here we go. One, two, three, four, forward, three, two, four. I can't count. And to the right. One, two, three, four, and forward. Two, three, four, and back. Two. One more time, left. Are we there yet? And forward. Woo! And back in that low athletic stance. Woo, I feel that in my calves. How about you? Want to give them another stretch before we get into our chair for our strength training? Walk that foot back, pace the heel on the ground, and lean forward. Feels good, you can stretch your arm up too. Knees out of that. And just a little out of time, work the other foot back. Catching our breath, slowing our heart rate down before we transition to our chair for our second set of strength exercises. Our best strength exercise research has shown that helps us stay living independently is body weight squat. So you can experiment. You can have your feet just a little to the outside of your chair and see how that feels, getting your hips back, keeping your head and chest up, reaching your hips back, slowly lowering your weight, and then pushing with all parts of your feet and drawing your hips forward with your glutes is a good way to get everything you can out of these body weight squats. If you wanted to challenge yourself further, you could cross your arms over your chest, keep the head and neck up. This requires a lot of lower back flexibility. If you wanted to challenge yourself further, you could do it with your weights in your hands. 
Well, let's get seated and get our weights in our hands slowly, mindfully, after we get a sip of water. Where did I put my water? Step to the side, lean to the side. We're gonna do the final leg of our triathlon in a little bit in our mind. I'll show it seated, but we're really gonna work on one arm exercises and alternate balancing on our left and then our right leg and then our left while we do these one arm exercises. So, I brought a five and a 10 with me. I'm gonna try it with a 10 for my first set. And if it's too hard, then I'll just trade it out and try it with the five. It's good to challenge yourself. And remember, when we do our shoulder exercises out to the side, the closer that your hand with your elbow bent is to your shoulder, the easier it'll be. The further your hand is away from your shoulder, the harder it is. So, our first exercise will be a bicep curl. And we're going to put, um, just draw elbow to the body, palm up, and we're just going to circle it like we're pedaling a bicycle pedal. So keep the shoulder down, and if you like, you could pedal with that left leg right on it. Seated, try to stand or sit tall, lengthen the spine. This is the seated preview. We can do this standing. If you're going to do the next exercise, you're going to be keeping that right or left leg on the ground, and we're going to lift that right elbow to the side, and we're going to crank that bicycle pedal off to the side. Now using our shoulder, and we're going to pedal with that right leg. Sitting tall, avoid the tendency or the desire to lean. Whew, that was hard. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna uh, back pedal with that left leg, and we're gonna push that weight back. Oh, you know what? No, we're not. We're gonna do a one arm row, and we're gonna pretend to get off and on the bicycle. So, if you're seated. We're going to stretch that right arm down and we're going to hinge forward and stand tall. Hinge forward, not too far, and then row. So that left, left leg will go back and up. Push it. Oh, no. So that was seated. And I've determined that 10 pounds is too much. So I'm going to trade it out and use the five pound weight. But I, I like for you to keep in your mind that on any given day, you might have more energy and you might not. And so you want to have a couple different sizes of uh, maybe in your household. And hopefully pretty soon in a, in a place like the senior center, where we'll have choices there for you. Okay, so let's go over to the left side, work on the left arm. You can remain in your seat, but we're going to do the opposite arm. So sidled up to your chair, best posture, palm up. We're going to put our weight in our left leg and just balance on that. And you can put that right toe down like a bicycle kickstand. But we're going to pedal with our arm lengthening slow and then curling up. We got our hand there. Nice and slow motion. So we're hinging at the elbow. I'm going to come a little closer so you can see what I'm doing with my arm. So we're Pulling that elbow back as we lift that weight. Keeping the spine stable. Got it? 
trying to move on to that shoulder side lateral raise this one's hard weight will go into our right leg now keeping that elbow bent shoulders down this time we're going to pedal with that left leg keep the body tall slow so we're cranking that pedal with our arm imaginarily and our leg got our chair if we need it we can also put our foot down I put my foot down. <laughs> that one was hard. Shoulders working hard. Okay, last one. Our weight again is going to be in our left leg. Back is strong and tall and long. We're going to hinge at the hip and let that right leg go back. And then squeeze your glutes and row. So reach, control. We've got the chair if we need it. This is a difficult balance exercise. Do your best with this one-legged Romanian deadlift and a one-armed row. It's really good for your hamstrings and glutes. Let's take that same exercise we did, the one arm row over to the right. We'll try it here. If you're seated, you could do it just fine. You're only going to hinge forward a tiny bit. So, weight goes in our right foot. Or stand on your right. You can put your kickstand with your left foot down and just hinge forward at the hip back long and strong. Squeeze your glutes as you row. Slow and steady. All right, the music's slowing down. That means we're almost, almost at the finish line of this triathlon. Maybe one more. And before we get seated again, I wanted to just take a moment to stretch our calves. And I want to encourage you, if you have a wall or a, a, a column or a doorway that's solid, that the best way to get a thorough calf stretch might be to use that. Walk one leg back, paste the heel on the ground, and give your body time as you lean forward for these now that the calf muscles and the tendons and the ligaments are warm they're a little more elastic and we want to restore that range of motion and the other leg too a little at a time we want to re-lengthen the muscles that we've contracted and strengthened Good. So the calf muscles also can benefit from a bent knee calf stretch. So while you're in the door frame, you can have a straight knee calf stretch or shift your weight and bend that knee and really push down into the heel and use your doorway for stability. It gives you just a better chance to, you know, hang out, not worry about balance, and really focus on the stretch. All right, well, we're gonna stretch some more in our chair. It's your last chance to do a squat or two with me. So make sure your heels are touching the chair. Get your head and chest up as you reach your hips back. And squeeze your glutes as you come up. A lot of people have, um, well, it's, there's, a, there's a name for, for it uh, when their gluteal muscles aren't working or, uh, to the best that they ought to be. It's called lazy glute syndrome. <laughs> well, I don't want you to have lazy glutes. No, no, no. <laughs> 
I want you to get your rear end gear, but not right now. Right now is the time to just bring your attention back to your body. Breathe, notice how your breath is. As you inhale through your nose, you can sit right back in your chair and support your spine by leaning into the seat back if it feels good. You can place your third finger of one hand near your abdomen or navel and the thumb of that same side hand on your rib cage. And you could feel as you breathe, if you relax your abdomen, it will expand. And so do your ribs. You could take your other hand and bring it to your heart, chest center. And as you breathe in, relax the abdomen, let the lowest part of your lungs expand. In the mid part, push your ribs out gently in all directions. And as your lungs fill to the top, you could feel your chest rise. And as you exhale, you could feel the chest naturally lower, ribs naturally come closer together. And as the abdomen contracts and the diaphragm contracts, pushes stale air out and pulls towards your spine. Take a few more deep breaths and just notice your breath. to continue that effortless type of breathing with the relaxed abdomen as we stretch. We can turn to the right side of the room and side saddle sit in our chair with the left hip slightly off facing the right, hinging forward supporting on our thigh. We can coax or ease slowly that left leg back. Your toe and foot should be relaxed and maybe pointing back, stretching the front of the ankle and shin, or it may feel better for you to tuck it under. Either way is fine, but let the weight of the left leg drift down and feel the lengthening of the front of that thigh. Breathe, inhale, arm up to develop that if it feels good. If it hurts your shoulder, bring it in. And you can stretch through the left side a little more with your arm in on the shoulder, chest area, or overhead, whatever suits you better. Deep belly breath, ribs expanding, chest rising. As you exhale, focus on that left leg drifting lower, lengthening. And when you're ready, ease out of that quadricep, hip flexor, side stretch. And turn slowly to the other side. Facing the left side of the room with that right hip off of the front edge of your chair. Hinge forward gently, slowly to avoid any cramp easing that right leg back and then easing your spine into an upright position and allowing the weight of the right knee to drift toward the floor. You can inhale arms stretching overhead if it feels good. Even a slight gentle arch or opening of the vertebrae if it feels good would be appropriate here. If not, just sit tall, let the right knee drift down, and stretch the right side of the body, leaning the left ear toward the chair back. With or without the arm, outstretched arm is good, but breathe deep. And let that right knee drift lower. 
that is one of my favorite chair stretches. If it's not one of yours, by all means, substitute one that you like, but do move your body daily and do some limbering, that is just gentle range of motion exercises for your wrists, your elbows, your shoulders, moving them all the ways that they move. And also for your ankles. So if you want, you could cross your left ankle over your right, or if you're able to put your left ankle on top of your right, you can move that ankle while you're sitting in our figure four stretch. And you can gently coax that knee or hip to externally rotate by gently hinging forward and gently bringing the outside of the left knee closer to the floor. And then you can test that wrist or that ankle circle again. Well, you could put another wrist in there too. But please keep one arm bracing because your back is flexed forward. Well, that's kind of a, wow, that's a coordination thing. Try it. One way, then the other, and then opposite. Well, that was hard. Good brain exercise. Okay, uncross. Remember, you can cross ankle to ankle, right ankle over the left and coax that down. You won't be able to do those ankle circles as well, but it's still a great hip stretch. Or taking your time, if it's within your safe, comfortable range of motion, ankle on top, hinging forward, back long and strong, and then circling that right ankle and maybe the left wrist. Oh, I've got to get running. Speaking of running races, try the other way. It was fun doing a triathlon with you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I try to mix it up and keep it fresh, but hey, Wherever you go, I didn't wear my mask today because it's sort of hot and I'm kind of stopped up if you heard that from my allergies. So, you know, but it's always good to have one when you go out and about. Most places outdoors where we're staying socially distanced, it's fine now because many people are vaccinated, but some aren't able to get vaccinated or for health reasons or age or, or many things they have not yet been vaccinated. So it's very kind to continue to have your mask, to put it on when we can't socially distance or we're indoors. So that's all I have for you today. Keep it safe and simple. Bye for now.